This video is about roasting some red uh, Majewarski peppers and canning them. And the uh, beginning of it is about, you know, basically canning the peppers. And then at the end, there's a slideshow of what's been going on the last couple of weeks. Some of the other stuff we've been doing. So yesterday, day, wait, day before yesterday, I went out and decided to finally pick the Ajavarskis. And they are beautiful this year. I can't believe it. All the watering that we did, um, we had nothing but sunshine and water up till a couple weeks ago. And you can just see the plants are loaded with just like big, beautiful, extremely thick walled peppers this year. They just loved all the sunshine and heat that we had. Um, I didn't, on the other hand. But uh, I just thought I'd give you a little shot. There's six plants in this bin, and each and every one of them's got quite a few peppers on it. They're just, you know, loaded down. They can barely stand up. So, you know, this is the start of it. I just went out to pick them in the morning. And look at the size of that thing. Just beautiful. Probably almost a pound of a pepper there. Really thick wall. And I thought I'd get them all in one barrel, in one bin there, but it actually turned out I needed two of the totes that I built to uh, to carry them all in. Um, definitely got probably 25, 30 pounds of peppers there in the end when they were all picked. But I just thought I'd share this part picking them because um, this was the year of the peppers. Uh, at the end, I've got some slides and some other peppers shown. But, um, you know, peppers just did beautiful, and there they are all ready to go up and be roasted. Just amazing. Adjavarskis are so good for roasting. And if we look over at the Jimmy Nardello plants, I've already picked these, and uh, you can see there's still a ton of them. Then I'm going to go grab a couple of the uh, Black Panther and Mommies there just to do a snack up for lunch. And we just steam them up. That'll be a nice little snack before lunch there. Steam them up, put some salt on them, and, you know, eat them. They taste like roasted peanuts. Or not roasted, actually boiled peanuts. And uh, sweet potatoes, they'll be coming out next week. So I'll load it up and get ready to go up to the house. I grabbed some ugly little carrots, too. Uh, but I thought I'd take a walk up by the elderberry bushes. These are those little twigs that I put in the ground this year. And I've been watering them all summer. You can see they've just turned into beautiful little trees there. And there are a couple of flowers on them. You know, there's one. There'll be a couple berries on them. And then there was another flower up here that was just gigantic. But now the, the berries are all falling off. I guess the dryness is getting to them because I stopped watering a couple weeks ago. And one thing I want to tell you, if you want to get rid of deer, these Mr. Clean Magic Eraser work. Remember I had the deer problem and I was getting them on the camera every night? Well, I put this out there and I haven't had one since. So that really worked. And I'm going to grab a couple of the butternuts left out there too on the way up. Let's stop and pick an apple. I can reach it from the gizmo there and snack on an apple too while I'm getting ready to work. Alright, so I got the peppers and just going to take them all and give them a dunk in some water there to wash them off. Make sure there's no bugs on them or spiders or dirt or anything before I start roasting them. And then I'm going to light up the grill. I pull out the old Weber. Um, this one I save for roasting peppers pretty much. It's, it's ancient, but um, I load it up. I save all the extra charcoal during the season and put it in a bag and then I load that up in there and I just you know throw more on top of it and I get a giant fire to get this thing really hot in the end. Now it's just I lit I just lit it up now so it's really not hot yet but um you need a good hot fire to blister these things. So there's the first load we've got on there. And you know as it starts getting hotter they'll they'll fry or blister up quickly. But it is a tedious job, and it does take a lot of time when you have this many peppers. And there you can see, once they get blistered on all sides, um, they're ready to uh, put in a pot and just let them steam for a while. I used to use plastic bags, but they were a pain in the neck, and they didn't work as good, and they made a mess. So now I just use uh, big pots, put them in there, and uh, let them all steam together, and that really helps get the skin off. So it took me, I think it took almost about, just about two hours from the start till the time I was done 
roasting these things. So it's not something that goes quick. And it's really hot out, and this grill is really hot to stand next to, so it's not a, a fun job, but it's worth it in the end. The flavor of these is just so amazing when they roast up. So here we are down to the, the last couple peppers here. Finally almost done and ready to go in. So there you can see i got two pots full of them, and uh, I'll just let them cool down for a while before we start peeling them. And my wife set up over here on the side. To, to get going on them and she's got her you know little pan full of them there and I set up over on the counter there and um, you know basically all you have to do is pull the, the end off with the seeds and then scrape off the skin uh, most of the time it just comes right off sometimes it can get a little messy because it's a little gooey but um, and uh, kind of remind me of cleaning squid it's funny but uh, you know it's kind of like the same thing you do and then once uh, the skin's off there, I just open it up and take out the ribs and take out any seeds that didn't come out with that core. Just cut off those little things there because they're not always good tasting. And then I just cut them into pieces that'll fit in the jars. Now, we've never tried this recipe before. I'll post a link to the recipe. My wife found it online. But it's a very simple recipe for canning uh, red peppers. And uh, I think it came out good in the end. So this does, you know, you've got another couple hours worth of work here getting them all cleaned up and ready to go too. So it's, it's not something that's quick. And we decided to break it down into two days. One day to um, pick them, roast them, and clean them. And then the next day we're going to can them. You know, those scrapers are help with clean up because these things get pretty darn sticky when you're going along there. You can just see how beautiful they are and how easy everything uh, comes apart once you roast them. So there's the uh, garbage for the compost pile and there's what's going in the jars. And boy are they good. So here we are the next day. I get out the jars. We had a couple new uh, boxes of these um, half pint jars, the jelly jar type ones. So we're going to use them and uh, couple extras too because the canner actually holds 26 at a time the so first thing I do is you know even though they're brand new I'm just gonna take them all and wash them really good just to make sure that they're clean because you never know you know what they did during manufacturing and stuff but it's um you know, it's, it's one of those steps you don't want to skip and then in the canner we put in three quarts of water and then the two tablespoons full of vinegar they recommend to help keep things clean in there and then this is a cold pack so we're just going to um, you can put salt in or not we like our peppers with a little bit of salt on so my wife added the salt to the jar and then it's time to start stuffing them full of peppers now the recipe calls for one inch headspace so that's an awful lot in a half pint jar here so you can see, um, jars aren't really actually that full, but you've got to follow the recipes. You can't skimp when you're canning. And they do go in there nice. Boy, do they look pretty in there. And these are, these are cold packed. These are actually cold. So it takes a while to, to get them all filled up. But, um... You know, like I said, there's 26 jars we can run out of time in our pressure canner. So that's, that makes it go quicker when you're processing. And trying, you know, just trying to keep that one inch head, head space you can see is kind of tough. But that's what they look like all filled up and ready to go. And there's a couple left there for the freezer. So now I'm going to move them over by the stove here and get ready to put the boiling water in. Brought some water to a boil and you have to actually uh, top off the jars up to the one inch head space with boiling water. Now these have a lot of air pockets in them and stuff so you can just put a little bit of water in at a time I found out. And then you have to take that little poker, um, I'll show you that in a second, in. Work it around in there, and as the water goes down, 
you have to add a little bit more to it and just always check it for the one inch headspace when you're done yeah there's that little thing poke that up and down in there a couple times you'll see the the water start going down and you want to make sure there's zero air bubbles in there once you uh you put the top on so take your time and you know just make sure you get all the air out and then uh time to go back take a damp paper towel and i wipe the rims of all the the jars here and once you're ready to put the lids on and then the lids are all um, washed up in the warm water like they suggest and time to put them on. And the last thing to do is just get the rings done there and uh, just snug them up and then put them in the pot. Now I still, you know, I still haven't heated the pot up so this is really easy doing this uh, recipe the way they tell you to do it. So take your time and you know just make sure you get the rings just snugged up right for canning you don't want them too tight you don't want them too loose so in our pressure canner I, I stack uh, 13 on the bottom first and then I go back and there's a shelf that goes in there that the, the second set sits on and they um, you know they all they're all exposed to the same amount of steam so you know, it doesn't matter that they're stacked. It's not like water bath where you have to keep them submerged. Because you're actually using the steam pressure to raise the temperature in here. So that's all full. And then there's a couple arrows on the handles there. You have to make sure you get them all lined up. Pot ready to go. And let me just spin it around here so we can keep an eye on the gauge. It's a good thing to look at while it's going to make sure nothing's going wrong. And then just turn the fire on underneath it turn it on high and oops I forgot to take that little weight off and that's set for uh, 10 psi in the canner now that's heating up I'm gonna freeze these other peppers that are left over and I find I use these little bit these little smaller um, pre-made bags from Avid Armor and I put a funnel in there so I don't get any goo in the seal area that really does help with when you're dealing with wet stuff like this and try to drain all the moisture out that you can when you're filling the bag. And these things, they, they come when you thaw them out in the middle of the winter, they're just like you you did them fresh. It's unbelievable how well they freeze. And now I'm going to go over and I'm going to use the uh, pulse on this. So And just watch it until it sucks down enough vacuum that you see the liquid heading towards the seal area. And then hit the seal button quick. And this uh, food saver is really, it's done thousands of bags, uh, over a thousand bags already since we got it. And um, it's just been working flawlessly, so I can't complain about this one much better than the last one. So there it is, they're flattening it out and they're freezing stack nice and um, ready to put these down in the freezer and, uh, you know, have save these for the winter too. Now, in the meantime, I had cut up some of the peppers that weren't quite perfect for um, the head marks on them and stuff that I couldn't really steam or scald. So, I'm just going to put them in uh, individual bags. And I like to make them up just about the right size bag for one batch of home fries. And, you know, these are the Ajivarskis. Plus, I've done other ones you'll see in the end. But, um, and these, I just like to think suck down the vacuum and uh, when it looks pretty good I'll hit the seal button sometimes if you let it suck down all the way with frozen pieces like that you can pop a hole in the bag they're ready to go in the, the freezer while I'm waiting here so the canner has been boiling pretty good and uh, you can see steam just starting to come out of there and you let it steam for about 10 minutes and then put the weight on there and what that weight does is um, holds the pressure and you can also see that little safety in the back popped up and sealed. So it takes a while for the pressure to come up because these are actually um, you know cold jars that went in there. In the meantime my wife's making some tomato sauce with the uh, extra tomatoes she's blanching them there. And we're just about up to 10 uh, psi and just a little bit over there and you see that starts rocking and that's an indicator that you're at pressure. And I try to keep it right around 11, 10 and a half, 11 PSI by adjusting the um, burner under it. And these you set the timer for 35 minutes. 
and just make sure it stays at that pressure for the entire time. Keep an eye on it every once in a while. But usually once you get it set and the temperature right, it um, usually stays right there. Then when the timer goes off, shut off the burner, let it sit a half hour until the pressure goes down and you can see zero pressure and I'm just going to pull the top off. But be aware because those jars in there are still steaming hot. So use care when handling them when uh, emptying the canner. I let them sit. I took the top off and let it sit for a couple minutes. And, um, you know, now I'm just going to take them out and put them on the wooden racks for cooling. And they will stay on the racks for, I usually leave them there about 12 hours before I touch them. They say 12 to 24 hours. It is, uh, it can be tough getting all these little jars out of there, but, um, that's what they look like. You see the peppers are all boiled up and squeezed up together to the top, but they'll all settle out over time. And my wife's, uh, finishing up her sauce. Uh, she's just got to run it through the food mill there, and she picked some fresh basil and brought it in for the sauce. Boy, does that smell great. All right, so here we are next morning. I'm, uh, taking the lids off, uh, Pepper, you can see they're pretty much back to normal. You want each head space here, but got to remove all the, the lids from them, and you have to make sure that you clean the jars good, especially in that area, you know, where they, the ring goes on, because anything in there will cause that ring to rust or even get stuck on in the future, and it can also cause the, um, you know, that lid to rust. Because you're dealing with like vinegar and acids, tomato acid, or pepper acid and stuff like that. So get them all washed up and uh, dry them up and polish them up good. Doesn't take that long. Really worth the extra step though. Then I made up some labels with my Cameo 3. But that thing's having really big problems with um, these print and cut labels lately. Sometimes it cuts them right. Sometimes it cuts them off. Um, the sensor on it seems to be going bad for sensing those uh, marks that it puts on to locate the cuts and it, it often uh, errors out and fails and just doesn't sense the right spot on them you know one one sheet might print out right and the next three won't so getting about time i guess to replace that i guess it's a throwaway item can't figure out how to calibrate it because you know nothing actually happens the same every time so there they are, all done, ready to go down in the root cellar now. And you can see they're real pretty. And I um, haven't tried them yet, but I'm sure they'll be good. So that's, uh, that there is roasting the red Adjavarsky peppers. And then going back, uh, let's go back in time a little bit. I did uh, finally get my onions cured, and I pickled some. I tried some plain pickled ones and some bread and butter pickled onions like that. So I'll see how they come out. If they came out good, i do them again. I'll make a video. And we've been doing a lot of tomatoes. We did uh, plum tomatoes. There's the a batch of those, uh, the plums that I put in. It was a real good year for tomatoes. Um, a couple plants I had really produced. And there's some more tomatoes uh, getting ready to be canned. And these are those big German ones, so they are tasty too. Dark ones are about done. But there's uh, there's my jumbo for the year. That one was like a pound and a half tomato. And peppers have been picking. These are those new ash pimientos I tried. And these are um, the decunos also. And there's a, the ash uh, pimento right there, and they're ready to go in the freezer. We're going to try stuffing them because they're a super sweet pepper. So we figured they'd stuff good. And there's the tacunos that we always stuff, We and they're going in the freezer too. All cleaned up, ready to go. And I am saving seeds as I go along and uh, cut them up. And there's the Jimmy Nardellos. Some of them are going to be in the... The next batch of pickled peppers we do. You can see the peppers are just loaded in the habanadas. Uh, they're just amazing how many are on there too. And there's some more of the ash pimiano, pimentos. And again, this is a look back a couple days ago at the um, Adjavarskis. Just amazing how many are on there. I've never seen peppers like this before. 
It almost seems like the longer I save the seeds, the better the peppers get. And either so many Anaheims for the uh, freezer. Uh, boy, they are hot this year, too. And then here's some of the big bells that we're um, using for stuffing and sausage and peppers. And, um, look at the size of those things. Those are the Emerald Giants there. That's actually the... Uh, it's supposed to be an Emerald Giant, but they're red now. And then the Nata Pinos are all ready. We've been, you know, enjoying some of them. And also the banana peppers. Everything's all red and just beautiful this year. Just loaded. I cut back on plants, but I still wind up with more peppers. I can't figure it out. And here you can see the tomatoes are about done. The cucumbers are totally toasted. And, you know, those tomato plants about had it. Sunflowers, you know, they're getting near the end. Um getting picked over by the bees and stuff but still they're my favorite flower in the garden these little teddy bears are cute too my wife's been stealing them sweet potatoes they'll be coming out soon you can see they're you know getting pretty big there and the tomatoes out there they're about shot now too there in the end a lot of rotten ones and stuff from the cold weather edamames uh, these are black panther edamames and I showed picking them before, and, you know, I keep picking them every day, just about. So here's a lot of peppers I'm going to pickle up. Um, some of the Jimmy Nardellos and Natapinos and Ash Pimentos and uh, a couple Bells. And another snack we're going to steam up. These things steam up so good, and they taste just like a boiled peanut. Unbelievable. So there's some peppers, some more freezer peppers cut up. And then we did up some of those uh, tomatoes. We canned a couple quarts of uh, the quarter, the red tomatoes by themselves. And these are the pickled peppers that I made with all those uh, sweet peppers and pimientos. I did chopped pickled peppers I tried this year with no seeds. So we'll see how they come out. They really smell great, though. And these are some of the um, emerald giants I picked for stuffing for dinner. You can see the size of them. Every one is beautiful. And these are some Anaheims going in the freezer. And they are just gorgeous this year, but they are really hot. Hot, hot, hot. So they're all cut up. I'll, I'll flash freeze them and then, you know, put them in the bags and uh, saving the seeds as I go along on everything. Now my wife's uh, steamed and blanched and peeled these peppers for stuffing. So she's making the stuffed peppers for the next couple nights, actually, it turned out. And look, you can see the sides of those things are bigger than her hand. And that's her giant baking dish she uses for, like, turkeys and stuff. So, you know, they're pretty darn big, and each one of them was a full meal. And here's the Anaheim's all frozen and bagged and ready to go. And then we've been working on the perfect pizzas for our pizza oven. My wife's got the dough down pretty good now, and I've got the time down, so um, that thing's really been enjoyable and fun. You go out and buy a pizza these days, it's like $25, where you can make these for about a quarter a piece, so, you know, really a big savings there. And we did finally finish up getting all the eggplant breaded and in the freezer, and uh, that's another great winter treat that comes out, you know, like, like fresh when you put it in the air fryer. Got my onions all uh, cured up and dried, and I, I had about 80 pounds of onions there. And then we did a, a lot of loads of um, tomato puree. We we just ran it through the machine, cooked it down. And again, here are the pickled onions. I did uh, bread and butter and regular, and more plump tomatoes there. And the squeeze them attic there, making some more puree to uh, can up for the winter. And that thing's been really a big helpful. You can run 100 pounds through there like nothing. And then just cook it down halfway and can it. And one day we had a rain and I caught this really great rainbow that went right over our whole house. It was unbelievable. It was just so bright. I mean, by the time I got the camera out, it had gone down some. But what an amazing rainbow. And, you know, it's like harvest time. Every day is something different. And uh, peppers, peppers, and more peppers. That's all I can say. We've really been enjoying them and also the um the sunflowers i've been loving too 
had some really perfect uh, flowers this year. Always a joy to look at when you're out in the garden, and the birds just love them too. And these are the little teddy bear ones my wife really loves. She's been cutting some and bringing them in the house. And again, there's um, Jimmy Nardello's and those habanadas. I just love the color of them. It's unbelievable. They are really good, too. So um, we're at the end now, luckily. Just about done with peppers and just about done with everything. So uh, pretty soon, time to dig the sweet potatoes and relax. And it turned out being a real tough garden summer with all the, the dryness that we had. We did have three months of drought there and wound up watering every day. But in the end, it all paid off. And, um, you know, we had really great harvest out of everything, basically, except for garlic. But peppers, uh, boy, do they like the heat and they love being watered every day. And, you know, the freezer's full now and we'll be enjoying them for another year to come. And same with tomatoes. They're all just about done now and all canned and put away. And uh, uh, finally have time to try to catch up on the lawn and other things that we let go. You can just see how beautiful they are. Those are those big German tomatoes there. So it, it's been a busy uh, couple weeks and I really hadn't put any videos out. So I just decided to try to put a slideshow together here at the end of this one to catch up. And again, my wife's had these uh, teddy bear sunflowers in the house for a while now. And she just loves bringing in fresh ones. So I guess by now you're probably about tired of seeing pictures of peppers and hearing nothing but, you know, talk about peppers. But anyhow, I figured I'd bore you for a while and uh, just show you just how um, beautiful they are and how nice and red they all turn this year. And oh my God, those big stuffed peppers were really good. And this was the jumbo one. It was uh, like a pound and a half pepper. Unbelievable. And we'll be enjoying these for quite some time now. So you can see here's the uh, you know the garden. I'm just about got half the bins empty now and cleaning up stuff and you know getting that all cleaned out. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to go back and throw a couple more of these shots in here that I took just to bore you a little bit more. But um, really, it's pretty collars and stuff like that. Really enjoy it. So I'm hoping everybody else out there had a uh, real great harvest this year. And, uh, oh, yeah, there's some sausage and peppers on the grill again. And, um, you know, you're all set for a winter now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.